Hi everyone, this is Anna here and in this video I want to show you how I start um, hand building or sculpting a bird similar to this one after many requests that I had to show how to even start um, I will show you I, I do have to do like a time lapse in between like in some some parts of it because if not the video would be too long so uh, I made a series of these birds. I call them my hungry birds. <laughs> As you can see, they all have something on their beaks. They're eating something. This is a kingfisher. And the clay has gotten much lighter now is because the, this one is almost completely dry. The other ones are still a little wet. Uh, but they are hollow. I've been getting a lot of questions if they're hollow. They are. Uh, also, the, where they are perched is hollow, the trunk or whatever it is that they are perched, so you have to hollow it out because uh, if not, it would take forever to dry. So I will zoom in and show you how I go about uh, at least starting with the basic shape of the bird and then I start carving. So I will show you all that. So let's just talk about the clay that you're gonna use for sculpting. You would want to buy something that is says clay for sculpting clay. This one that I'm using is So Date by Aardvark. And it's like, a, it fires to a, a, like a buff color. So it's a lighter color clay. Uh, and it has some grog in it. So even though it feels smooth when you smooth it out with your fingers, the surface becomes real smooth. But if you start carving on it, then that grit comes to the surface so you can get different effects for the surface, however you want your sculpture to be. So uh, in any case, um, there are also several ways that you can go about making your piece hollow. Um, the birds that I am doing right now that I'm sculpting, they are somewhat, you know, small. They'll be uh, less than 10 inches tall uh, at the end when they're all fired and done. Um, this one here, uh, adding the the trunk that where he's perched is probably about seven inches tall right now. So it's gonna shrink a little bit. Um, so the way that I like doing is by doing like pinch pots um, and I will show you in one of them here. And what I did is I got two balls of clay that are about, doesn't have to be identical, about the same size. Uh, and you do the pinch pots to form the body and then uh, another pinch pot for the head. You could do all one and kind of shape the head, but that's how I like to do it. So anyways, I'm showing you the way that I like to sculpt. Uh, another way of going about this is, uh, is to make your piece all solid. A lot of people um, do that. They, they start with a solid piece. If you get to larger, real large sculptures, you need a support inside um, because my birds are kind of small right now. I don't need that support yet. Uh, so you can, if you would make it your shape, you shape the, the whole clay to sculpt the, the, let's say the basic shape of whatever you're making. Uh, if you make it solid, you would have to, at the end, cut it with a wire tool or a knife or something that would cut it through, let's say through the middle and then you would get both parts and carve it out. You can use any carving tool, um, something like, like this, or even like uh, the tools that you use for trimming pottery. You can just carve it out then and just remove, you know, remove the clay until you get to a, a thickness that is about, I don't know, I like to leave, depends on the size again, if it's a large, the larger your piece is, the thicker you want the, the walls to be, I guess. You don't want it too thin, but I like mine pieces to be about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch thick. Uh, those are the birds that I'm making and they've been working well for me at that thickness. 
Uh, if you make it too thin, it might crack. So anyways, that's another way that you can do is to cut it in, in the middle, hollow it out, carve it out, however you want to call it, and then put the two pieces together by scoring, you know, using slip, and then you attach the two pieces again, and then kind of do the, the seam so you don't see that seam. Uh, so I like doing like this. So I, I just go and start making a, a pinch pot. And I'm sure you all know how to make a pinch pot, but I'm just gonna show here on this ball of clay here. I want my piece. Oh, and the bird that I am making right now is a, it's a pretty small bird, but it's a very colorful one. I think it's called a lilac breasted uh, something. Anyways, it's the real colorful birds. I'm not sure, I can't remember now where they're from, but uh, I think if you Google the most colorful bird in the world, I think this one comes up. Uh, it's got every color in the rainbow, I think. <laughs> That's all I'm doing is the very start, you make a pinch pot and I pull Pull the walls this way so it's I don't start getting it too wide so I'm just pulling it with my thumb inside I'm pulling with my other fingers to make it longer different people use different techniques for pinch pots and then once I'm done with the two parts that's going to be the, the body, uh, I'm going to make sure that this is uh, somewhat flat, you know, the rim here. And then I'm going to attach them together. And I'll show you that uh, right after I have both of these done. So here it is, all three uh, pinch pots that I did for the body and then for the head. It's just this little one here. And I put a plastic on the clay so that it doesn't dry out while I'm doing this. Um, so the two pinch, pinch pots, like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly the same size uh, because you're still gonna shape it once it's all connected and attached. So see, they're pretty close on the rim in size, but let's say, and I cut this one because I had an excess in here. Uh, but let's say uh, this one was a little wider. So I'm going to make it just a little wider here just to demonstrate here. You know, sometimes it's hard to get both to match. And what you can do is just go with the little knife. Um, where's my knife here? So you just go with the knife and make a, a V cut so you can cut the clay however deep you need to be. So like that, remove it, just put a little water, score, make it wet so that it will join and connect the two again. Make sure that you go, I like to go over the, the seam one way and then the other way so that I know that they're uh, kind of overlapping each other. You can cut it on an angle too. So I should have done, it will be easier to, to do the overlapping. So if you cut it like this, you can just overlap the two seams instead of cutting the V if it's not that much that you need to stretch, you know, or make it smaller. Stretching is easier. Is the when it makes it smaller, you need to cut or just do one cut and overlap the two and then thin it out. So see if now it looks like it's now it's a little bit too too small <laughs> anyways I was just demonstrate how you 
you go about making something smaller so that you can attach both. And then I'm gonna cut just to make sure that this is like just a flat surface. Because right now it's all wavy. Just want somewhat flat here so I can score and slip. So I slip and score. <laughs> yeah, this one is still. This one is still a little. A little bit larger on the on the rim. So this is what I'm doing right. So this is another way you can just kind of shape it in the rim. You can also push them like this, almost like you bunching them together like this. You push in the clay and that will make it smaller as well. So there are different ways that you can make it, you know, your rim smaller to fit. I think it's pretty close now that I feel comfortable doing it. I didn't want it to get that wavy look either. So I'm just smoothing it out here. Yeah, the pollen here where I live in Georgia, um, it's, uh, we're east of Atlanta area, about maybe an hour from Atlanta, north, a little northeast. And uh, the pollen has been really bad, so I just had like a sneeze fit. <laughs> so here I am just scoring. Put in a little water. <clears throat> On both sides. Doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> Cause you will shape it, you know, later, so. Okay, so now you can press them, press them together, give it a little twisting motion here on both, just to make sure that they're really attaching really well. And then you can start pushing the clay over. I'm just using my fingers, but you can use something like this, the back of this uh, tool I have here. <clears throat> I like to bring a little bit of the clay also right to the seam so that it helps to create that stronger seam right there, the joint. So I'm just pulling a little bit of that clay from that side now to where the seam was. It tends to create like an indent where the line is. So as you can see here, so I'm just bringing a little bit of that clay in here. You can also put a coil a coil of clay, you can go and do that, but I'm doing this instead. I'm just bringing some of that clay here. In a way, it's the same thing as if you were putting a coil. So you just put extra clay at the joint just to make it stronger. Now I 
just put a little water and smooth that out. And you'll see later on that we'll get to the inside to do the same thing, smooth out that seam on the inside, but you'll see a little later for that. So now that you have kind of like an egg shape, I'm gonna wet it more. So here is my picture right here of the bird. I hope you guys can see, it's right there. He's very rounded, the, the shape of his body. So um, I have to figure like, just visualize how his body is shaped. And then, so the breast area is very rounded, comes to, it protrude, protrudes a little more, and then it goes back to where the tail is gonna be, which is gonna be like right there. So I'm gonna hold it like that and start shaping that clay to be a little pointier this way, is where the, the tail will go. So you see how it's starting to get a little, coming to a little point right there. And because the clay is still pretty wet, it's easier to do that. So this is the back of the bird. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Again, this is where the tail is gonna go. So I'm starting to shape that like that. You see how it's already coming to a point. And then this is the, the front part of the body. And I'm gonna start making this a little smaller as well, because that's where the head is gonna go. Okay, so this is the very basic shape. Now, the head, I have to see here, maybe I need to <clears throat> wet it a little more in here. So the, the shape I made, the head, um, is, I don't know if you guys can see here on the, on the video, is it flares out a little bit that way, which is going to be where it meets the back. And here, I made it so that when I was pinching to make the, this pinch pot, I was pinching so that it curves down a little bit. So that's the front. That's how I know the front to the back of the head. And when I look in here, this is the front, right? Cause that's the part that protrudes out. And this is the head, the front of the head and the back, which flares out a little bit. And you can still put coils to, to do the transition from the head to the body. So I just want to see how I want to position. So, you want to position so that it's not right on the tip of the body, right? Because he, usually the way they perch, that's the shape. So you have to be looking at the picture here and looking to see how you want, you know, he has that protruding area, then it goes down as a tail. He's going to be perched like this. Let's pretend that's the perch or the branch or whatever. And that's where I want my head to be. So I'm just going to mark 
lightly. You can use anything. Huh? Just to make a mark here where my the head is going to go. Because I'm going to score that area as well. And now <clears throat> I'm going to leave a little area here for the to create that seam, but I am going to open it. And oops, it helps if I use the knife. So the area, I'm leaving about maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch. So. <clears throat> So remember I told you we're gonna get to the area to smooth out that seam on the in the middle. So now that I have the hole here, and remember I left, here's my mark. It's about a, uh, a little more than a quarter of an inch, right? To to do the scoring and slipping, slipping score, <laughs> sorry. So what I'm doing now is uh, smoothing out that seam that we did in the middle. So I think the head is a little bit big. I'm just going to trim just slightly. I'm going to trim a little bit just to remove. If you think the head is not quite right for the body, you can remove some of that clay. So I am removing it now because I'm going to use probably this piece here as a coil to, to go around the head. So, um, so again, the part that flares out is here. So I know that's the back and that still fits in there. I am gonna add a little angle right here, just be because of the way that's shaped, it will fall in better if I do this. There. So now I can add a little water, add a little water in here. As you all know, this is a better tool for scoring. Yeah, I think that's much better. So we do the same thing, a little twist and Start to just using your fingers to bring that clay down to match with the other one to blend in. I also have those rubber tip tools that work great as well. And I will put the link for everything that I'm using here. But anything with that, this rubber tip, they have this is a smaller one. Um, this is an even smaller one that I have. I bought a whole set of these little ones to get into real small areas. And then I have a larger one here, this one, that works really well for larger areas like this one. See how it's much easier to blend in using this uh, rubber shape. It's called clay shaper, I believe. So you kind of curve the, you know, where you want to blend in, you kind of give that curve because I am going to use this as a, as my coil just to go over right there and I can blend in a little better. That's the piece of clay that I just took off from making the head a little smaller. 
and I'm doing it here not only to make the, the joint a little better, a little stronger, but also because it doesn't have that dividing line from the head to the body, so it really helps to blend in and to shape what your bird look like on the picture. Because later on, these will all be feathers that you're gonna carve, so you wanna give the, sh you know, the similar shape that you've seen in the picture. So now I start shaping a little bit, so that's the head. You can see now the shape. Head, the body where the, the breast comes out and what the tail is gonna be right there. So for the head now, you have to look straight on, like this is the front for me. So where the eyes are gonna go, and they're usually kind of like an in, there is an indent where the eyes go kind of like pushing towards the back. And I try to do that now, so it gives me an idea of what, where the eyes are gonna go. It has that indent that pushes to the back, kind of like that. And then you start shaping the head. If the head doesn't quite look right like the pictures, you can push more clay out of it like now I'm doing. And the eyes. Let me see, the eyes are gonna be like right there. And they push that way. And they push this way. So that if you look on the back, that's what it looks like. And I'm already shaping the, the wings as, I, as I'm looking here. I'm <clears throat> just marking it with my fingers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I am so affected by the, the pollen. <clears throat> I can feel my voice. I'm losing my voice already. <clears throat> Same thing on the on the front. You can mark where the fat the wing is gonna go, like right there, pushing to the back. Right there. Pushing that to the back. So it gives you an idea. I'm using my fingers because it's just easier. If it's not right, you just erase it just by rubbing it back. <laughs> there. And there. So that's pretty much what the, the first set of wings he has. Looks like he has a shorter set of wings that comes to here, and then underneath he has another one. So I'm still tweaking his head here because it looks like one is higher than the other. Okay, now for the beak. And just remember that this is the very first stages of the <clears throat> of the sculpting. So you put a beak, then you can tweak. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go right there. <clears throat> And when you look at the picture, the beak, where the eyes are, are almost in line with each other. So, so 
was a little long. So I took some out. And the beak is always wider where, the, where it attaches. And make sure you turn around, look in different angles, make sure the beak is positioned correctly. So the, the eyes, I'm making it a little lower than what I had it, so it's right there. This kind of goes in, so you can look at the picture and make the adjustments that you need. You see that curve right underneath his beak there, there is that curve, and that's what I'm doing. I'm bringing more of this clay a little bit forward here, and let me see. Yeah, I think I need to bring the wing, so I am gonna cut a slab that's going to be his wing that I'm going to place on each side. So this was just kind of to give me an idea where the wings were gonna go. Also, I had a piece of clay in here. Let me see. Oh, right here. Just a piece of clay that you shape it, a little elongated piece like that. Uh, that will be the tail. So it is a little bit big. Uh, so. I can cut it. Let's see. As it does come to a, um, not to a point, but it is much narrower here on the, at the end than I thought, so. And it's a little too thick right now, but it's because I'm going to carve into the clay later on, so I don't want it to leave it too thin. And what I'm going to do here is just kind of carve out a, because the tail is not hollow, because it's going to be thinner, so you don't, you know, it's not going to be hollow. So, I'm just adding some water. And it's quite. And I'm gonna put it a little bit of water here. That's where the tail is gonna go. And it will attach. So as you know, it's all a matter of blending the clay as you attach things, just you just blend in, oops, that's a chunk of hard clay right there. So you can just move the clay to blend. I am going to take a quick break to get my allergy medicine here because I am kind of losing my voice a little bit. But I just wanted to finish the basic shape and then we'll come back and I will show you how I make the wing separately and then how we carve this cute little bird. 
Again, you don't have to use your fingers. You can use something like this or any wooden tool that you like. I like using my fingers for that, for smoothing that out. Anyways, that's, that's the basic shape. And you see the tail is still a little thicker. I think it's about a half inch right now, but I will carve underneath and on top. So it will, be, it will become thinner. And then you can position also how you want, if you want the tail a little bit, you know, up or depending on what you, depending on how you want it to do. I'm just trying to make it how it is on the picture there. It is almost at the same level as the back. So it's like that. And then he'll be perched like this. So. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention uh, that I didn't do it here which I, I might be able to do is still, I might mess up the head is, I always like to turn the head a little bit to the side and I really forgot to do it here. I might do it later. But anyways, this is the basic shape and we'll, we'll be back with the other phase, which will be attaching the, the wings. Um, I will show you how I do that just with a slab of clay and then the carving will begin. So here I am just getting some clay to make a, a slab for the wings. Just trying to get it to be even. And I'll see if this piece will be enough. Might need another, another piece because it looks like he has two sets of wings there on the back. That's how it was with the owl. Usually there is a shorter one and then there is a longer one underneath. So, let me see if I divide this in half. And I have something like this. I'm trying to make now the one that goes, the, the longer one, the longer set of wings, so let me see if it's too long. Like that looks about right. I think that might do it. I'm just gonna round over here just slightly. Just barely makes it for the second one, so. comes to about there looking at the tail and 
where the wing, the longer wings ends. So that seems about right. Okay. Um, I might be able to hmm, yeah, usually I look at my phone for more pictures but for the sake of this demo here I'm just looking at the the one picture that I printed out <clears throat> um, I can tweak it later because I can look at more pictures later on, but just for the sake of the video, just for you guys to see, if there is a second set of wings, it's usually a shorter one that kind of goes like that in here on the on top of this one that goes kind of like on an angle. Um, but for now, I'm not going to worry about the second shorter wings. I am just going to show you this because what we could do too is carve carve out the second set to look like it's superimposed like this one on top of the next one. So I do the relief carving afterwards. So for now, I'm just going to see how I had it. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some water and kind of curve a little bit so it's like this before I attach same thing with this one Just making a little concave or curved. So now before I attach I will do the same thing, a score. Actually, I'll put both here just to see. Let's see here. I have to position it right. So now I am going to mark where the wings are going to go. This one and cut this out. Cut that. And this is also the time that you can clean up any any seams in here inside you can smooth out you see where I had the tail there it was a little messy so I'm smoothing that out and adding a little water scoring Thing. 
same thing here. This is the first, first wing to go in. Blending. You don't want to blend this one too much because you want the wing to be protruding a little bit. And you don't want to push too much in here. And this one kind of goes all over the tail. So you can stretch this one out a little bit and then we can clean it up later. But this is what it looks like now. Then this one do the same thing Just cutting that and you can also clean up the seam for that wing I won't be able to do it on this one but I'm doing a Whenever you can, doing the head here, which I hadn't done before, smoothing out with the head attached to the body, the seam there. Let me cut these a little more. Using water. To score. Doing the same thing here. And I, was, I mark is so that you you're able to attach where it's supposed to go later, so you can follow your mark that you that you did lightly just to see where things go to attach. So I'm blending in a little bit on here, the, the wing. And this part can stretch a little bit. So that, I don't know if you guys can see my picture here. That second set of wings that I mentioned is a shorter one. So it comes like this. It comes over this longer wing. So I can do that when I carve. I'm going to shape it so that it looks like this set is over the longer set here so you you do that it's kind of like an illusion but you carve these deeper 
and then it looks like this set of wings is over that one and I'll do the same thing here but I can't carve I can't carve this just now because it's a little too wet but that is the shape that I want for my bird here is the back and I will pause it now and continue a little bit in a little bit just to show you maybe I'll use my heat gun for a little while just to dry over the surface a little bit more so I can show you how I carve so I used the heat gun to dry a little bit more so I could carve and I haven't carved this side yet which I'm gonna demonstrate uh, but this side I carved and I did the eye in one side and I'll do this one here that I haven't done and I went ahead and I added the wings in here that second set of wings with the piece that I removed from here if you remember I when I put this wing I removed part of it on both sides so with that piece I was able to put the second wings so I'm gonna show you how I did the carving on the wings I I used just a pencil just to mark how I want the feathers to be uh, in here also and then I, I start carving so I use the diamond core uh, relief carving tools which I'm very familiar with because I do uh, uh, relief carving on some of my mugs and a lot of other pieces I do so I'm familiar with how this works but it comes to it's on an angle the blade and the idea is of relief carving is to make it look it's like an illusion of something on top of the other when everything is actually in the same plane but you're making it look like they're little steps and that's how I did it here on the wings um, and you can see how this side is smooth but this one is is rough and that is because once you start carving the the grog from the clay comes up to the surface so what you need to do is just put a little water in your fingers and smooth it out like this and that solves that problem if you want it smooth uh, if not you can leave it rough the surface but that's all I do is I use my fingers with a little bit of water to smooth out the surface there So now everything is smooth. So yeah, that's that second set of wings that I was saying is this right here. On the picture, the orange feathers that comes, they're shorter wings that comes all the way from his back, from the neck down, and they're kind of short and very kind of fluffy feathers and then these are longer and these are the, the tail there will be long even longer so so you have to see in what direction the steps are going to go to make it look like one feather is on top of the other even though everything like it like this everything is on the same plane but here you can see how the effect that i have so I want to make the same thing to look the same. So, so I go this way. I'm carving it. You see, so now this looks like this is on top of this one. And then you can do the curve over here. And then you can go again here. How I'm removing the clay. So that creates that step. And I'm just gonna continue going. And then you can do 
you can round the bottom here of the feathers like that. You see how it looks really rough right now? But as I showed you, we will, I will smooth that out. It's still a little wet, the clay. It's still not quite leather hard yet, but I wanted to finish it, the carving, so I can edit the video and post it today. So you see that the clay that you're removing is, is more at the edge right here where you want the, that effect to be. And then the rest you just do just a light carving over it so that it's on that angle, the indent. And that's basically how uh, relief carving works. And I will put the link of everything that I'm using on the, in this description of the video. So this is the diamond core tool. Let me see, it's P27. It's a good, um, good tool for relief carving. They have many carving tools, but this one is the relief carving one. And then I can define a little better later on, but I just wanted to get the basics done so I can finish the video. So that's what he looks like right now. I need to put a little cut here on his beak. And on the other side. And then here, I will show you the final result, but I use also one from Diamond Core Tool that comes to a point. And this one is the P28. And now the rest of the body, including his head here, is all going to be carved with this. So all, all it is is long and short strokes like this all over. because these are the finer feathers, as you can see here on the picture. So that's what I'm using. So I'll show you when it's all carved.
So just to recap, I added the trunk, the tree trunk, and just the same, the same way I did the bird with the pinch pot, but this time it's hollow through. So I just, here it is. So you can see that it's all hollow. And then um, just like he is on a branch here, uh, and as you can see, he's kind of perched, but the feathers almost like cover a little bit of the branch where he's perched on. And I wanted to do something similar here. So what I did is I put his feet in on the trunk first. I attach his feet and then just scored and slipped um, his body onto the trunk. And here, you know, you make sure that, I use this tool here, which I'll put the link. I use this quite a bit for like all these textures on the trunk, but make sure that this is really well attached, you know, like the back of his tail for support. Then I go inside and I make sure that's attached also inside. You can even put a little coil. I didn't because I think it's already well enough attached in there. And for the trunk, I just use this as a texture. You just make kind of curve, uh, curved lines, and then you can add more, you know, however you want it. I've been making my trunks with this and it's, I like the way it looks. With the texture but you can really I even added some like mushrooms I haven't done it on this one yet but I did it on this one here like that you can add that you can add more texture for these that I wanted to um, to look like there is moss growing on the tree I just make little holes with the end of this tool like that and then I would, what I'm going to do when it's all after it's bisked I am going to put some copper wash uh, into these so that when, the, when I put the glaze it will run just a little bit but this is going to give like a real nice green and the green will go into the holes, so it would look darker. So I thought this would create a nice uh, moss. And then you can make like some holes, like the tree trunk has some holes in there. Oh, I can put another one, maybe, maybe here. And just carve a hole kind of like this and that is also going to be a place where the glaze is going to pull in there and it's gonna, it's going to look nice just adds to the texture like that and you can just add texture any way you would like but this is what it looks like. I know I told you that there are different ways you can do the feathers, but I went ahead and carved, you know, with the pointy tool and I did all, all the feathers are carved. I think it gave a kind of like a nice look to the bird, but, and also I ended up turning his head way on the beginning when we were showing uh, while the, the, the joint was still a little wet. I was able to just turn it slightly so that he's not facing front. You know, he, his head is turned just a little bit. So here he is, and here is the picture. So here's my bird. And I can't wait to paint him because he's gonna be a very colorful bird. I think he's gonna be cute, so. I hope you enjoyed this video and you should give it a try sculpting and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.